Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jeanette Wallace Gedge, and I'd like to welcome you to a practice session for Cobblestones Chronicles. This is going to be a program on Mondays at 11 o'clock, and I'm very much looking forward to telling you a lot about cobblestones. Cobblestone, so, what is cobblestones? So, cobblestones is a regional museum celebrating the history of the Wairarapa. The museum and our early settlers' village are 169 Main Street in Greytown. In this programme, we'll be bringing you stories about the collections and a lot of the items in the collections have been lent to us or given to us and they date from the early days of European settlement and the development of the Wairarapa. Did you know we've got six Category 2 heritage listed buildings in Cobblestones? So a lot of you might have seen cobblestones from the street as you drive past and not realised behind it there's two acres of gardens and buildings. So it's, I encourage you to come and have a look. But we'll also put some information up on our FM website so you can see them. We'll be talking to you throughout the programmes and telling you stories. Really, what we say we do is bring history alive. We'll also del be delving into the stories behind the names of some of our streets. I've got a really good book here by Gareth Winter, which is about how the streets of Carterton, Greytown, Featherston and Martinbright got their names. It's, I really recommend it. It's really interesting. The first street I'm going to tell you about is the story of Church Street. It's pretty obvious where it got its name from because right on the corner of Main Street and Church Street is a large church. But right in front of the church, there's a huge gum tree. It looks very old and it's absolutely correct that it's very old. The story of that gum tree is really interesting and it was researched and written by a Greytown resident, Frank Fife. The story was published in 1991 and I'm indebted to Mrs Mary Fife, Frank's uh, wife, Frank's widow, for permission to read it on this show. I'll also be playing some music that's been written in New Zealand about New Zealand. I'll confess right now that I really enjoy folk music and folk music is usually telling stories often about real events. So here's one that has echoes of the difficulties faced by many of the farmers in New Zealand. Scrub and Brackberry, sung by Mike Harding. It was written by Paul Bond. So here's the first CD. Here's to the home I've left so long Far in the back country Hidden in the rushes The scrub and the blackberry Muddy paths and potholes Tractor tracks and post holes Mossy battens dangling there on the wire And the open fire Six inch nails and hay bales Waratahs and slip rails Dogs and children yapping away in your ear And the air so clear Here's to the home I've left so long Far in the back country Hidden in the rushes the scrub and the blackberry
days of chipping thistles Curses and dog whistles Crutching in the yard with the flesh of the shears As the evening nears Talking round the table Loud guffaws and babble Families now split up and splintered like kindling wood But the life was good Here's to the home I've lived so long Far in the back country Hidden in the rushes The scrub and the blackberry to the home I've lived so long So that was Mike Harding singing The Scrub and the Blackberry and I think that has echoes of the lot of the difficulties faced by many farmers in New Zealand and of course that's what Cobblestones is all about it's all about how we settled this beautiful part of the country and why is it called cobblestones? Well, the buildings are situated around the original Hastwell stables. And the, these were one of several stables in, erected here in 1857. And that's when the cobbles were raised as well. Up until 1880, the stables were the region's hub for Cobb & Company horse-drawn coaches departing for Wellington, with Hastwell coaches also serving the wider wrapper. Up to 70 horses were grazed overnight on the site. Hard to believe these days. While the coachman enjoyed the hospitality of the Rising Sun Hotel, which was right across the other side of the road. Just imagine coming over the Rimatakas in a coach drawn by horses. So we still have the original cobbles and that's really exciting because they've actually got a heritage listing too. But now I want to tell you the story of an interesting object from our collection. We have a lot of what we could call curious objects and one of our former trustees Brian Baxter has researched their stories. The object that I'm going to tell you about today is a briefcase and when you if you look at our website later then you'll be able to see this briefcase and a picture of the two sisters and the briefcase belonged to one of them. Fanny Collier. She was also better known as Irene Collier. The Collier sisters attended Greytown School in the early 1900s and this rather beautiful old briefcase with Fanny's initials FC embossed on it was given to us after when the family were clearing out after they had died. They both found uh, Irene and Marjorie, or Fanny and Marjorie, taught at the school. And they were both good tennis players and were members also of the Martinborough Golf Club, which was around in those days. They were early pioneers in women's sport. And it wasn't long ago that women's sport was frowned upon. And we've got the Olympics coming up quite soon in Japan. But do you know the Olympics banned women until 1900? And even in 1900, women were only allowed to participate in tennis and golf. Perhaps that's where the Collier sisters got their particular sporting interest from. Women athletics debuted at the Olympics in 1928. But women only competed in the 100 metres, the 800 metres, the high jump and the discus. 
The 800 meters was a bit controversial, with some competitors becoming exhausted and unable to compete the race. Given the kind of clothes that they wore in those days, I'm not actually very surprised. So the women's 800 metres was removed from subsequent Olympics and didn't reappear again until 1960. And that was actually just in time as we had a real New Zealand athlete, Maurice Chamberlain, who won a bronze medal in the 800 metres at the 1964 Olympics. Golf returned to the Olympics in 2016 because it was also admitted since 1900. And did you know the only Olympic sport where men and women actually compete against each other is in the three equestrian events, dressage, jumping and eventing. So as we come up to the Olympics this year in 2021 in Japan, it's lovely to think about how many women and men are going to be competing there. We're really lucky in having a wealth of information about the Colliers at Cobblestones and you can see more about this family in the newest exhibition at Cobblestones. It's called A Tale of Two Trunks and we have the actual trunks that the Collier family brought out when they emigrated from England in the late 1800s and it com- and we've also got the trunk of Mr Shu who also emigrated from Denmark around the same time and our exhibition compares the life stories of the two different men who immigrated to the Waira Rafa and explains how they got on. So I'm actually going to finish quite soon as this is a practice session and First of all, I'll tell you a little bit about me because I'm going to be presenting this programme every couple of weeks. You might have guessed from my voice that I'm not a New Zealander born. I was born in Scotland in a little place called Lennox Town in the Campsie Hills. Just north of Glasgow. I came to New Zealand in 1983 supposedly for three years, but I fell in love with this beautiful country and a few years later I fell in love with a good New Zealand bloke. He's fifth generation descended from Swedish, Danish, English and Scottish settlers like a lot of New Zealanders and his earliest ancestors came here in the 1830s. Through him I've learned a lot about the early days of of European settlement. So I want to end this first programme with a song that my husband Niels wrote. It's called My Father's People. It's about his family, who were a farming family, but it could be the story of almost any New Zealand family. I look forward to sharing some more stories with you soon. Thank you for listening. And here's Niels' song, My Father's People. My father's people Cleared a forest Drained all the swamps Broke in the farms By the old Tapo Road We bailed in summer Fed out in winter And fed the calves Sundays down at the hall Mrs. Mac played the sweet by and by And old Pop Finley was still waiting on the lawn To lift him up to his home To his home in the sky Time came Moved to the city Packed a big truck Drove over the hill But deep down inside We were sons of the forest Guess in my heart I'm living there Still Mrs. Mac Hair in a bun 
upright as her old piano I hear her daughter is living in Sydney Last week her grandson emailed from Rio Those barefoot days, the shadows now That walk so short In the high noon garden But later today I swear they did lengthen As the sun was setting West of Eden There's a place I go you can map it on Google Place I go, you can't get there by car Place I go Might find my brother And the place I go It's a place in my heart Someday down at the home Mrs. Mac played the sweet by and by And old Pop Finley was to wait on the lawn To lift him up to his home To his home in the sky To lift him up to his home in the sky And that was My Father's People by Niels Gedge. And that's it for the first episode of Cobblestone's Chronicles. I'll look forward to talking to you again on Monday when we'll have the full programme. And meantime, thank you for listening. Bye for now. <laughs>